everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth In Story, and I am here to do, to turn my phone off. <laughs> um, I am here to answer a question that somebody asked me. So last week on live chat, uh, people were asking like about soul decks and who, you know, what people's soul decks were and um, what was my soul deck. And I'm like, I don't have a soul deck. Like I have a multi-spectrum soul decks like I must have lived many lives and that's why I need so many decks which Miss Kaleidoscope was like not impressed with that excuse for having a lot of decks um so anyway somebody in the comments had said oh could you please do a video like on what were your 10 like what are 10 soul decks of yours so I really thought about this a little bit and I thought okay sure sure right why not right so I have a pile over here and um, which you can see, oh, you got a sneak peek of one. And I kind of did it more along the lines of it, like, because Patrick and I were talking like, what does that mean to have a soul deck? And so what does it mean to have 10 soul decks? <laughs> so for me, it's more like, it's not necessarily that these are always my favorite ones to use, or where a lot of them are, but not all of them do I use all the time. But it's more like they express a piece of my soul. So they each kind of uh, tap into a certain part of, of who I am, I guess. And so that's kind of how I went about this. So could I have done many more? I probably could have done my whole collection and <laughs> been able to uh, come up with some reason why that it was, what does it tap into for me? But I decided to stick with 10 because, you know, I can't stick with one, but surely I'll be able to stick with 10. Um, so I'm going to, let's see, I don't know how to, quite approach this, but I'm gonna, I think, a little bit go in order. So, I have to have the Llewellyn Tarot, uh, because the Llewellyn Tarot, and this is a, a new version of it, my actual one is trimmed over there, um, but the Llewellyn Tarot was my very first tarot deck, and it's what I learned to read tarot off of, it's based on Welsh, Welsh mythology, Celtic uh, mythology, but specifically Welsh mythology, um, and it's what I learned to read tarot on, and I, I worked with this as my only tarot deck for like nine and a half years, so um, look, I mean, look at that, it's just, the colors are beautifully rich, um, it's why I fell in love with the sword suit, I mean, come on, look at it. Uh, yeah, the colors are just, I love that two of swords. Yeah, I mean, it's just what I fell in love with tarot with. Um, so I have to, you know, I can't not, I mean, the, the, the golds, it's got such a beautiful gold tone to the deck. Um, but the reds are rich and the golds are rich and the blues are beautiful and, you know, it's just, it's beautiful. But it's definitely like the pentacles is a very glowing suit. Um, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. And look at the hermit. I mean, the colors are stunning. Um, and so, yeah, I had to have that in there because it's just, that's where it all began, right? <laughs> we have to have the beginning. Um, if we were to kind of go in order, then, you know, I would have to have the shadowscapes because the shadowscapes by, um, Stephanie Pumun Law, um, this was my second deck. I think I had I tried a couple other decks in between, but I just never used them. Uh, but this was my second actual deck that I worked with. And um, again, the colors, absolutely stunning. This to me speaks to my Libra self. It's definitely, there's something very air about it. Uh, when I do check-in readings, this is the so uh, as, as above. Uh, it's kind of, it just kind of speaks to that, it seems, that beautiful air element, although the earth element is very powerful in the pentacles as well. But it's just, it speaks to me at my Libra. Um, and they're just beautiful and they're intricate. And yes, some people say they're too busy. I don't think so. I think they're absolutely gorgeous. I love the fox. Again, the color, the richness of color is just beautiful. But this mostly um, just speaks to my air self. And this was, uh, I really dove into this deck um, the first year after my son had passed. So there's a lot of that kind of healing work that's kind of wrapped up in it as well. 
I mean, look at the look at the Queen of Pentacles. She's like they're literally rooted into the ground when they need to be. I mean, it's just stunning. Uh, I just love it. This was my first like you know after having that for nine and a half years. It was like whoa, there's other things out there, and it was just like falling in love with the idea of other decks. You know, kind of started with the shadowscapes. So I had to put that one in there as well. And then I think in terms of the decks that I have here, the next one that I got, uh, and I have not stopped loving, is the Terror of the Hidden Realms. This is my fae self. Like, this is, truthfully, is this is my fae self. This is how I see fae energy. Um, I was hesitant to buy this deck because I thought uh, a lot of the, the images are very up close, uh, kind of waist up imagery of people and it was very i didn't i felt like i wasn't going to really connect with it going from the shadowscapes with all that detail to less detail i thought mm, i don't know it's just beautiful it is so there's just a depth to it and then there's a light to it where there needs to be light um it's so beautifully fey look at that look at that eight of swords um it's not rider weight smith um it's i mean you can see traditional meanings in there but kind of does its own thing it's just gorgeous i absolutely love it i haven't stopped using it look at the hermit one of my favorite hermits love it um it's always out on my face shelf i still use it for the so below in my uh, check-in readings um, so it's one that I still actually use, and I just love it. Love it, love it, and love it. So that's Terror of the Hidden Realms. It speaks to my face self. So we have my Libra Swordsy self. Um, so those are kind of the first three in kind of order. The rest of these I'm going to kind of go out of order. So this is the Terror of Delphi. This is one that I actually don't use a lot. I still do use it. Um, mostly for myself, but I have used it for clients as well. Uh, but it is, to me, I, it speaks to that part of me that absolutely loves mythology, that part of me that taps into the idea of stories. <laughs> Let's just look at the back. So basically, this are, um, the person who compiled this deck has taken classic art uh, across the, the time period time frames but she didn't just pick the art so there's art decks out there and they're beautiful and I have nothing you know nothing bad to say about beautiful art decks this one though is above uh, a step above in my personal opinion because it actually is not just that the image so this is the lover's card it's not just that this lover's card is uh image looks like the lover's card it actually goes with so if we look here and I don't have my reading glasses so we'll see how well I do lovers card so this is about I thought so but I wanted to make sure so this is about Cupid and Psyche and so if you've ever read the story of Cupid and Psyche this is like this massive love story right um, but it talks about you know this is about a tale of people that are overcoming challenges um, so we do have this idea of love here and passion and choice and choosing each other. Um, I always recommend C.S. Lewis, um, C.S. Lewis's Till We Have Faces, which is the story of Cupid and Psyche that's absolutely amazing. Highly recommend it. Um, but so that's what I'm saying is that each of the cards... Um, it actually is very specifically not just because it looks like the card, but because the energy of the card um, is in the story of the myth behind it or in some way it's, it's connected with it. So it's, it's a curated deck that's so stunning and it just speaks to that to me. I mean, I literally, I, I, I know I was in grade school, I want to say fifth or sixth grade when I found the mythology section of the library and I was just lost in it. I read everything I could find and I never stopped reading mythology, uh, mythology type books. Um, and so this just really taps into that um, aspect of myself that I love. Um, let's see. So another one would be the wild unknown. Um, this taps into for me, probably the more that more shamanic, um, side that kind of digs into the ground, digs into the earth, um, 
it, it's a little bit more of that energy uh, for me. It's it's not perfect. <laughs> um, Patrick and I, this is Patrick's perfect deck. It's not perfect. Um, I don't like the Ten of Swords. It does not speak to me of, of the Ten of Swords. Um, I don't like the um, Eight of Cups with the Broken Cups. Those are my two, like, oh, can I please just have a, a different card for those two cards, and, and then this would be perfect. But it's all animals. Um, it's just beautiful. It's simple. Uh, but there is something really magical about it. I know that there's a lot of, you know, talk about this, you know, maybe being one of those hyped decks. I don't find it to be so. I find it to be really beautiful. It reads gorgeously. I have done so many readings for myself and for clients with this deck and it just reads amazing. So it's worth kind of working my way around. But it kind of taps into that um, shamanic. -y. This I don't particularly like this one either. I don't see the Five of Swords always that way. So there's definitely some problem ones in here. It's not a perfect deck for me, but you know, it's pretty close. We're talking about a couple cards. Um, you know, three or four cards out of 78 cards. So um, I, I will take it and I will always use it. It's just gorgeous. Um, this is the second edition. I have all three. Uh, the one that I trimmed for my third edition, which is down on my shelf in more of my ritual bag. See, there's the Ten of Swords. Uh, I have to go work around it. Um, but where I trimmed it and then black and grays and blacks on the edges just has that really, I don't know, it's just got a really earthy vibe to it that I really, really, really love. So I do really have to say that the Wild Unknown. The other one that's similar is would be the Wildwood Terror. I probably should have pulled that one out as well. But that has that same similar taps into that when I do um, more setting intentions and things of that nature I tend to do the wildwood tarot sometimes the the wild unknown but usually it's the wildwood tarot so it just taps into that really earthy earthy shamanic -y side so what are we at that was one two three four five so we're halfway there um I have to say the bohemian gothic it's my inner child um but it's more than just that it, it makes me it's one of my favorite walkthroughs like if i had i don't really like to watch my videos back but if i did it would be this one because i had so much fun it just tickled me <laughs> it just i love it i absolutely love it i think a it's gorgeous b um it's so smart um c it um is very strong it's very humorous and nurturing um it reads gorgeously i do not use it all the time i i do use it sometimes for clients but it's kind of my deck i don't i don't use it a lot for for other people but i do sometimes just feel like it's the right thing to do and especially more around Samhain time um but for most part it's kind of my deck i find it to be very nurturing i find it to be very humorous um, I find it to be not in the least bit scary, um, but also it has a beautiful play on light and you really have to pay attention to the, what's going on in the background in this deck. Half of the, the good stuff is going on in the backgrounds. Love this Wheel of Fortune. I mean, oh, it's a beautiful deck. It's a beautiful deck. And it's got one of my favorite strength cards. I've probably already passed it and it has one of my favorite devil cards in here as well so powerful love this justice card so yeah i mean the back's just gorgeous it's just gorgeous um so thank you miss boho for <laughs> giving me one of my soul decks um love it so that's the bohemian gothic by baba studios of course I have to say the Margaret Peterson. Um, this really speaks to that healer self. Like that, you know, I do a lot of my journey with grief readings with the Margaret Peterson. Uh, this is the backs. And this is the fronts. So yes, it's a big deck. I love it big. There's one of those I really wouldn't want to have any smaller. Um, it's so stunning. The use of color in this deck inspires me beyond measure. Um, 
it's just beautiful and the pentacles i'm not a huge it's not like i don't have anything against pentacles but the pentacle suit has never been like one of my suits i'm an air person and i have a lot of fire in my chart i don't have a lot of earth in my chart um but the pentacle suit in this deck is stunning the 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 air suit is absolutely stunning um it's one of those that you look at and then you have to look again because there's something more um this one as well as the next one i'm going to talk about there's just there's something that takes these ab above there's if they're a notch above a lot of decks and that does not say anything against the other decks because there's i have a, many many decks that i absolutely love but there's just something about i think the the time period that it took to create these decks the life that was wi lived the way that they approached uh the cards and really just sunk themselves into the card there's just something really powerful about this deck as well as uh the i mean this is one of my favorite sun cards it's stunning um, so I use this a lot, uh, both for myself, um, but also for clients in terms of healing. And I just feel like it really taps into that healer side. So these are just like different facets, right? Uh, different facets of myself. And these just tap into those, uh, for me in a strong way. And so that's why I would call them like, you know, pieces of my soul decks. So of course the other is the Marielle. So this is a, a version i have you know I, I trimmed mine um and i love it trimmed however at the same time my corner rounder ate at the time now i love my corner rounder now but my corner rounder ate one of the corners and i had to make it much more round than i wanted to and it just really irritated me um so Patrick had a couple copies and he sent me one of his copies trimmed the way that I really wanted it which was with that little bit of black left over of course edged in black um, and then he wrote as I did he wrote the titles but he's got better handwriting writing than me um, this is just a really powerful deck and to me this is sort of the high priestessy deck like to me this is pure high priestess this is down in the waters you know if uh, wildwood and the wild unknown are more that shamanic feel like this is that mystic this is like down there in the depths of the high priestess that's how i feel about this deck i think it is extraordinarily powerful the art is just some of the some of the cards like this is the page of discs one of the most stunning page of discs there's just it's just a stunning deck and i know that it's not everybody's cup of tea and i know that there are some people that are like oh like this three of cups is just amazing this kind of um you have this river here and it's splitting off into three but it's still the same river it's still connected oh, it's just beautiful look at that oh look at that see that to me i mean that's a stunning swords card it's just beautiful um yes there are uh in your face elements such as uh some degree of nudity that people may not be i mean look at this five of swords uh, so gorgeous so gorgeous uh, these aren't my reading glasses i love uh this i think this is a nine of swords yeah the nine of swords i love this um there's definitely nudity in this deck but it's not gratuitous in i mean look at that and it has one of my i, I mean i would be so remiss to not i mean this is one of my favorite uh emperors um it definitely has my all-time favorite um i mean look at it's just gorgeous it's just this my all-time favorite death card so 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 stunning um so one of my all-time favorite strength cards one of my all-time favorite knight of discs i'm really the only one one of my all-time favorite seven of wands um the only one that you know he's a little ob obnoxious there i won't put him on there and horrify some people but the only one I would say that I don't really like is the Hierophant, and of course with the alien babies. And it's not because she's she's got 
her boobs hanging out or she's strange and she is strange looking it's more that i don't like creepy children and the children really look like alien babies so i can work with it um when it comes up i don't have a problem working with it uh, but it is just one of those that's like oh, that's the one if i could just remove it it would be perfection but it's it but it's powerful and i get the message and i can definitely work with it so this is like that high priestess like this is kelly's tapping into her inner high priestess kind of part of my soul um and then i would be completely untrue to my soul if i didn't have a couple pip decks uh as people want to call them um and i absolutely adore the taroko neoclassico which is a deck from 1810 um and it is it's just it's fairy tale so if Terror of the Hidden Realms is Fey energy and um, the Terror of Delphi is mythology, this is fairy tale, which to me is just as important. But there is just a sweet, I mean, look at Serpunzel's Tower. Oh no, <laughs> Serpunzel's Tower. The coloration, the cardstock, the backings, the simplicity. Uh, it's just, it's just so sweet and so simple. Uh, it doesn't read sweet but it's just gorgeous it's so simple and clean and it just looks straight out of a fairy tale or like i said like jane austen was like reading um from this tarot deck it's just i love it i love everything about it i love to read with it i do use it for both myself and for clients um it just taps into that fairy tale for me that fairy tale energy and i absolutely and that's so important to me it always has throughout my whole life one more, one more. I don't have any idea what we're at time-wise. Um, but I, the Soprafino, I love the same. Now, this is the Ancient Italian Tarot by Los Scarabia, which is their um, putting out of the Soprafino Tarot. Um, and it just, I love the backs. But for me, for the, for me, this deck, and I think this is all Whopper Jaw for whatever reason. For me, this is all about the miners. Um, I do really love. I don't like uh, woodcut. I'm just not a huge fan. I, mean, I have them and I appreciate them of the old Marseille style woodcuts, but I'm it, artistically they don't do anything for me. Whereas these are so stunning. I'm gonna sneeze. I can tell. Um, they're so stunning. <coughs> Sorry. I've been uh, dusting. You can see my tape, my uh, sacred shelves are over here now. I set up an art shelf over here. I still have to move some other furniture around. There's dust everywhere. I can't believe that's the first time I sneeze. So it's not only gorgeous coming back to the beautiful Soprafino, but it the the pips um, are just magical. Like to me, this is everything that a pip deck should be just in terms of uh the lack of scenes does not in any way uh reduce the beauty i mean look at that three of sword or three of wands sorry um look at this cups five of cups here i mean it's so beautiful um you can't say that that's not illustrated right that is so beautifully illustrated um that i just it's one of my favorite and i have no clue why everything is upside down love this three of pentacles i love pentacles as well in um unscenic uh decks beautiful tower so it's just beautiful and for me it's it really is about just how stunning the miners are and just the colors um and then when there are people they're just beautifully done for these old styles not not for me like the um I'm just not a fan of the woodcut. So, yeah, I had to pick this one um, as the, those are my two favorite pip decks that I have. And I and I like a lot of my other ones. I love the Pagan Otherworlds, um, but it's not perfect. And this is this is about perfect, and Neoclassico is about perfect for me. So I had to go with those, and apparently I'm going to have to straighten these out. So there you go. Those are my ten. Again, I could have, there's lots of other ones that I could have said and why. Like, I love this right 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 there the uh, arcana playing cards tarot it's i love it because it speaks to that cardamancer side and brings everything full circle and i love that so i'm pagan other worlds which is right there uh which is actually on my desk and i love the sforza um 
I, so there's a lot of decks that I love, and they all tap into something different, but these are 10 that, that really stand out for me. So there you go. I uh, I'm not going to say who I think it is who requested it because I'll probably get it wrong, but there, that's for you. Um, my top 10, not my top 10 decks, but these are my soul decks that just speak to different aspects. So what are your either, I know there's a lot of you that have a single soul deck. Um, do you have one? Do you have many? Do you think, well, I don't even know what that means. Um, and no. <laughs> so I'd love to hear um, what you think about it and which ones you would pick out for yourself in the comments below.